Marcus Aurelius said, what we do in life echoes through eternity. What is your life echoing through eternity? Welcome to Echoes Through Eternity with Dr. Jeffrey Skinner. Our mission is to inspire, engage, and encourage leaders from across the globe to plant missional churches and be servant leaders. So join us and hear the stories of servant leaders reverberating lives as God echoes them through eternity. Brought to you by Missional Church Planting and Leadership Development in Dynamic Church Planting International. Chapter 2, Death to Life Out of the Grave Following the death of Jesus, the disciples hid in an upper room, reliving the atrocities that had taken place in the last 24 hours. The sense of fear in that room was palpable. The fear of the unknown, the fear of things never going back to the way it was. A creak in the floor or a bump in the night had them all on edge. That same sense of fear has been felt countless times around the church board table in the established churches. As the church marches towards death and members understand that without action, the church will be no more, the decline in membership, the lack of children, and the disengagement in the community has led up to this point, to death. But it did not have to end this way. For the church, the decline happened over decades, and for well-established churches, all at once because of a moral or spiritual failure of a leader. If the story of Christ ended with the image of his disciples waiting out their fate, isolated, cut off from the world, it would be a telling ending. Many established churches have waited, spent countless years isolated from the neighborhood, praying for a savior, a pastor, or a program to lead them from death into life. In the waiting, God can use these echoes of death to spring forth a resurrection in the spiritual life of the church and her members. It is in the waiting that God produces a vision for the remnant of believers to begin to pray through the peril of loss as they seek God's resurrection power. Like the disciples before, many church leaders are scared when a change season comes to even the most seasoned church member. When the winds of change blow into the church, her leadership must ask themselves, are we willing to go through a near-death experience to experience the healing growth of faith? Near-death experiences can jolt a church back to life as they mark the hard choices that led to change, or on the opposite end, to speed up death. Know this truth. Even healthy churches must constantly find new ways to maintain the status quo, or much less grow because of the fickle nature of church attendance in today's culture. The church has begun to realize that death has come to all, but God is still wanting to revitalize the established church to reproduce healthy church plants and to come out of the grave as they grow into a new life. Jesus is alive. Hope for the church. If the story written about Jesus ended in a period, It would be a cautionary tale of leading from behind against the leading powers of the day. However, the story of Jesus was punctuated by God not with a period, but with a comma, that Jesus is alive. Thus, the story has an alternative ending. In Luke chapter 24, verse 34 through 49, Jesus appears to his disciples after he arose from the grave and shares that life has taken hold. While some Christians gloss over the story of the resurrection or frame it in once a year during Holy Week, the story should leap from the pages of God's word as it should resonate for the established church. There is hope. There is hope in what looked like the end. Change is uncomfortable. Many people talk about change like it's nothing. Yet change is uncomfortable when change comes to a person or even a church's life. It is inevitable with change, there is pain and pushback. Pain comes from giving up on a person's desires for a stronger will, which causes resentment because of the changed nature within the church. This is seen through withholding ties or small meetings, rallying the troops against the change, families stop attending services, and even outright insubordination by ignoring the change mandate or pretending it does not apply to them. It is a reminder that change is uncomfortable because it makes the church conform to a new season that some may not be ready to enter. 
With church revitalization, it reestablishes the order of things within the church hierarchy and forces members to either let go or to hold on to things they think matter to God. The alternative is staying the same and slowly losing members through death as no new infusion of spiritual life is breathed into the church. Instead of seeing change as a menace, leaders need to see change as a necessary for future growth. Change is for future. Do you love old, well-established churches with rich history? There's a joy learning the history, the past challenges, and the God moments where something extraordinary happened. By understanding the past, you see the future more clearly. Change is not for yesterday, but for the day, for this day, and the day that is yet to come. Change should never be for change's sake, but change comes when a program or a space has outlived its spiritual effectiveness in reaching the lost with the gospel. The church's focus is to be missional outposts to spread the good news of Jesus. When the church turns into a social club focused on those things within the four walls of the church and not the ones dying and going to hell outside the church's walls, then change must come. If the people attending the local church do not look like the people surrounding the church, then change must come. If more people drive into the church than live near the church, then change must come. Change should be seen as a positive antidote to reclaim the church's health for future generations, not as death to what is in the past. Change is about letting go to gain. The most painful part of change season is when a person or a family leaves because of changes you have suggested and implemented. To know that they've left because of the change and not because God called them away pierces the heart more than they know. In these grieving seasons of loss, you must learn to turn that pain into prayer for the family who left and for the progress of the local church community. While prayer may not bring a person back, prayer sustains the lines of communication with God to make sure you're leading with wisdom and direction. Understand that God places the right people and leaders in the church for the needed season. Sometimes seasons are long, but others are short. And as a leader, you cannot fear what season you are in. Remain in a season in prayer to know where and how God wants you to direct or to serve in the local church. While some will go, know this truth. God will bring others into your church's fellowship that will help the church go into new heights like never before. Change is about obeying God. As you read scripture, you see a central theme that carries through the 66 books of the Bible. That is, obedience brings about God's blessing. When leaders miss God's best for their ministry, it is when they fail to be obedient to God's plan for their life. What about your local church? Are the people being obedient to God's plans? Have you led them in a season of prayer, discernment, strategic planning, and implementation? You might have lost some wonderful leaders in your time ministering in the local church. But what you see as a loss early on can become a gain to the kingdom when you see them flourish at another church and then see how God blesses your local church with new leadership who brought forth incredible abilities. Instead of fearing change, God wants you to obey his change. While change can be scary and every loss painful, God always restores. Be reminded that the crucifixion of Christ did not rob the disciples from the resurrection of new life. In the flesh, the the disciples looked like they had lost it all, but God had another plan. So too, when you keep serving God faithfully, he has a plan for your life in ministry. Be encouraged to lean into it this change season. Do not hide from it because God is getting ready to pour out a storehouse blessing upon your local church if you're willing to face the consequences of leading change and resurrect the church from death to life.
rebounding from the grave. A new day brings opportunities to renew the passion for the local church. Like most leaders, you have felt the weight of this challenging season. With back-to-back years of pandemic-induced drama, the church is slowly moving out of its protective cocoon to assess the damage left behind from the damages of COVID-19. For many churches, that means fewer people, less participation in church life by our members, and less income to help the church reach the community. But with every dark season, there comes light in the dawning day before her. Capture the vision. The church's vision before the pandemic has changed due to the new realities before her. Instead of seeing the vision shattered, see it as an opportunity to reshape and then recast the vision to repurpose the church to reach the community where they are today. Far too many churches found out they were social clubs and they closed their doors or lost members during the pandemic. The pandemic exposed the promise found in man and not in God. For each season in a church's life, the vision has become recast to meet the needs for today, while the message of God's love and redemption remains the same. Today, today can be the day that the church captures a new, fresh vision of serving the neighborhood around her and dreams about planting a new work. Spend some time in the first part of your day and week talking with your neighbors meeting new community members, and engaging current church members in conversation about where they see opportunities to serve the community and begin to lay the framework to recapture the vision for the lost. While some predict the established church will die, claim that your church will be healthy enough to plant a church in the future. Create opportunities to serve. How often have leaders cast a vision in January and never mentioned it until the end of the year? Much like in an exercise program or a diet that is kicked off when the ball drops in Times Square, the program falls to the wayside over time without attention to detail, discipline, and determination. The vision to move out of the grave must move from the mouth into purposeful action where people are involved and invested. Do not stop at just one area of service, but offer a variety of places for your people to serve inside and outside the church. Much like the variety found at a local restaurant, your people do not like the same thing. Play to the skill sets of your people through weekly interactions and long-term relationships, serving together, provide the right community partners for them to connect into the future. Host a community fair in your fellowship hall and invite outside agencies and ministry groups to come and share their needs and provide opportunities for your people to ask questions and to consider where best to serve. Make sure the commitment is limited to 60 or or 90 days and then host another fair. This controlled commitment level enables members to know the time commitment needed. They can either sign up again to serve in the same area or with another organization if they like once that time commitment has been met. Complete a task to gain wins. Coming out of a season of disappointment, attaining early wins can build momentum for more significant wins down the road. As you develop relationships within the community, begin to invest in them. Complete the task you've agreed on before moving on to the next project. How often has someone started but not finished a project in your house or even the church? Maybe that's you. Finishing honors the commitment made, but it also honors God by signaling that the church is ready for the next God project. Completing a task enables the body of Christ that you lead to celebrate has and has been accomplished and, and begin to dream again for what more God wants to do through your local ministry. Wins are windows of opportunity to celebrate the volunteers that help complete the task and opportunities to dream again. Celebrate the church's community partnerships through exceptional Sunday service where agencies are highlighted. Have a giving Sunday where a special offering is collected by donating to a worthy cause through a member's choice voting and reinforcing that the church is there to serve, not to be served. 
The grades seem final, but Jesus' resurrection shows that nothing is final until God says it is final. God is calling the established church to rebound from death into regain momentum to serve others in the community as they move forward to seed the spiritual ground for growth and to prepare the land for a future church plant. Seeding for future growth. Recently, I, Desmond, had the privilege of spending a few weeks with a substantial church that has seen strong and sustained healthy growth over the past 25 years. As I spoke to their tremendous leadership team, it was clear that they had done many things right over the years, but it was not clear if they could sustain that healthy growth for years to come. Like many established churches, they had early success from reaching new families and expanding their building footprint and programmatic expansion while maintaining a stable leadership team. Shifts in demographics and leadership change has forced them to see the need for a fresh vision to sweep over the campus. As I was being shown around the campus, my mind instantly wondered to fill in the missing gaps, as this church was good, but could be great. While it is the major transformations that get most of the praise and notice by attendees, it's in the small changes that gain traction over time and lead to future growth. One of the questions I peppered my host with was, what was their vision for the future for the next chapter she was entering? It was in their silence that I saw a need for strategic mapping that would lead to future growth. Reposition the vision. For many established churches, they can look back on a time where the church saw sustained growth and allowed that growth mindset to lull them into a comfort that growth begets growth. I asked one dynamic leader of the church to stand on stage as people are entering the worship center and look out on the crowd and see which age group enters the worship space. If the worship center filled with most folks 50 years and older than families with children, then the church has the early warning signs of a future decline. While the church might look healthy today with people in seats and tides in the offering plate, within the next five to ten years, the church will shift into a steep decline as the senior saints age if the church does not reposition the vision to reach younger families. Hear my heart. I'm not suggesting that you ignore your senior saints. In fact, it's the pastor's priority to develop relationships and sustain continuity with them through special luncheons and visitations and prayer meetings, just to name a few things. But shift resources to seed future growth over time. An established church cannot plant a church if they themselves are already dead. Resource the future. In the church, the leadership had recently decreased the children's ministry department budget and shifted those resources to other programs. Well, it may make sense on the outset to reestablish financial principles to make resourcing the church's more church more equitable. The church board, in essence, seeded future decline by removing the resources from the department. If the church is aging, as I suspect, by the data that was gleaned, then more resources need to be put into the children and youth ministries to attract and retain young families with children. Observing the current use by children and teens, the church leadership should see the space through the prism of a child's of age to begin to design a space that is fun, educational, and spiritually strong. Far too many leaders in their leadership place their own ideas above the needs of those who utilize the space, sprucing up by painting and new furnishings, design a, a layout goes a long way in providing a space where hearts can be won to Jesus. When you see the space through the eyes of a visiting family and not the eyes that have seen it for years, you can sow the seeds for future growth by mapping out a strategic plan and to see rooms filled with children with their laughter or teens learning. Replan the space. The church I visited had an incredible gym that was used by multiple outside sources who see the untapped potential to future growth and a creative space for a future church plant or two. 
As I was strategically mapping out the space in my head, I was shown their kitchen, and it was clearly inadequate for their current size and future needs. Next door to the kitchen was a classroom where they could knock down the wall and expand and update the kitchen facilities to a more modern use for future groups and church plants that are currently and in future utilize the the gymnasium. This step would enable the leadership team to replan the space of children's department and to plan for future growth as there were several underutilized classrooms that could be expanded or redesigned to fit their current and future needs. In established churches, many leaders get used to the current footprint and stop dreaming about what could be. Here, this church sat on a beautiful campus with a small pond and a picnic area near a playground. As the leaders shared that many of the community used the playground during the week, I envisioned enhancing the playground by adding a second playground for toddlers, more shade trees, several walking paths with benches, and a new basketball court for teens to play on. While these changes may seem small, they will share with the community that others are welcomed here. As the disciples embraced the fact that Jesus was very much alive, it created an opportunity for them to shift their outlook and to see beyond their current circumstances to see where God was moving them. The shift created an indelible mark that the church follows today as they moved from death to life. If your local church is like the one described above, it is ripe for the harvest. If you're willing to seed for future growth through preparing your campus for use in the coming years and moving on from what it has been, you will set up the church for a God movement to come and be prepared to birth new ministries outside the church's campus. You can be a co-creator with God by helping to echo our guest voices, share our episodes with friends and family and on your own social media accounts, give us positive five-star reviews. The more positive reviews we have, the more visibility we have, and the more voices that are echoed through eternity. We often invite guests who are serving faithfully year after year, often in anonymity in their respective roles in ministries. God sees them, and the reality is, is for a good kingdom leader, that's enough. We do not do what we do for the accolades of humanity. We do it because we're called by God. But I believe that God uses people like you and I to continue those reverberations and echo them throughout eternity. You can partner with God by liking, subscribing, writing a quick positive five-star review, and again, sharing those voices with friends and family and on your own social media accounts. Those reviews will eventually lead to other guests who have larger platforms that have more listeners who will then in turn listen to the show. And again, it further echoes those voices, which is the whole vision of the Echoes Through Eternity podcast here is to continue echoing those voices that God is echoing through eternity there. So like and subscribe and review us if you would. We'd appreciate that greatly.